things going on all the time man. so anyway they, they called the election projection well the uh, fun, uh, funny thing is they were interviewing uh, we've turned off Fox now ever since they sleazeballed the owner and, and then he died uh, how many years ago was that it was around when uh, the nine o'clock guy got canned or the eight o'clock guy yeah o'reilly they squeezed called him and got rid of him but they did it to the owner and then he died mom said it was like four years ago i say it was like eight years ago roger ailes well is that who it is it's never been the same ever since yeah it seems like that's who it was well yeah because the murder they sold to i think is that when they sold it the, the company sold. Oh, it did. Yeah, they sleep well. It's slowly, it's quickly now going the other way. Well, anyway, they got a new guy on it this Saturday, Sunday morning. Well, they are asking um, Huckabee, the girl was asking, well, who is going to be the transitional guy who's going to handle the economy and uh, who are they going to be uh, doing this? And, and he said, well, you guys called the election. Why don't you guys make those decisions it was a good answer since you guys made all those decisions why don't you make those decisions you you decide who, who's doing that so biden doesn't have to make any decisions see it's not over to the fat lady sings and ain't gonna be until january 20th and that's yeah not until then let's hope it doesn't it, this is an opera oh, well it uh uh the, uh, I remember when we were in the Mennonite Church, just 35 years ago, I don't know what was going on, something was going on. And I remember the guy, he was a photographer at an investment council, and he married in. The only way to become a Mennonite, if you're not a Mennonite, is to marry into the Mennonites. You can't, like, marry into the Amish. The only way to be, be one is marry in, and you're still an outsider because you're not really blood blood. And if you're like uh, Doreen and I, we're never in in. You could go there, but you're not in on the end. Anyway, he said, I, mean, I forget what was going on. He said, oh, this country is just too heavily armed for that to ever happen, you know, because everybody's got guns. But don't be surprised. I mean, you got Mitt, the Mitt Romneys of the world, the Chris, 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 Chris Christie's of the world, and uh, those are, they're, they're willing to throw their guns away like that, you know. Anyway, the Cinevacan uh, is where we left off. 
he who confesseth his sin and forsaketh is granted forgiveness. Confessing and forsaking. And we looked at that verse. I think it's Proverbs 28, verse 13. I saw, I coveted, I took, I hid. Uh, in the case of a Democrat, they saw, they coveted, they took, and they do it politely, and they have it open for all to see. And that is just the truth. That, you know, there's no old bar here now. It just, everything's all out in the open. And, and the last ditch, it's the last ditch effort to cover up everybody whose uh, foot is in the deep swamp. And I said, as soon as Trump was getting in, I said, he's going to have everybody, Republicans and Democrats alike, against him because there's so many Republicans so deep in this. They don't care who wins, just as long as the, the money keeps flowing. Because they saw, and they coveted, and they get in, that, in on the act. Then they take it. Now the Republicans hide it, where the Democrats, they don't hide it. In fact, uh, Biden actually brags on it. He brags on it. He says, if you don't give us the billion dollars, uh, we won't give you the billion dollars unless you whatever. They, bra he, they literally brag on it. And on October the 26th, he actually was bragging on the, uh, the greatest voter fraud that this country has ever seen. They have organized that and orchestrated that. If you look on to it, they actually brag on it. You can say, well, it's a ga another gaffe of his. But maybe he lost his mind to tell the truth. We've assembled the greatest because Obama was on the scene. And isn't that where the uh, uh, Mayor Daley, is it Mayor Daley? No, no one could get rid of him because yeah. it's the political machine. Right? It's just one big. Yeah. All right. Now, we'll pick it up here. Father, bless our lesson. And um, may we learn something from it that we can use now in our observations of the world and of ourselves now. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Listen, we could talk about the sin of Achan. I saw, I coveted, I took, I hid. We, we, we can talk about it, discuss it, but see if you don't learn something from it. Uh, what's the sense of being here? We've got to learn something and then apply it. I mean, you can just see that just by looking around you. That's, that's, that's how it goes. Uh, uh, what, uh, what diapers are you going to buy as a young mother for your baby? What diapers are you going to buy? Washable. <laughs> Past the washable days. <coughs> Talk about Come Bob. On. Talk about Bob. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, What diapers are you going to buy? Pam you're, gonna, you're not going to buy Huggies. <laughs> you're going to buy Pampers. Huggies came after. You're going to buy Pampers because it, it, they just keep putting it before you until you cover them. <laughs> and I don't have to wash them out anymore. And now if you have Huggies, if you have a real bad diaper, see, it doesn't ooze out if you have Huggies. See, I, I saw, I coveted, I took, I hid. Well, it, you, you end up buying them, you don't steal them. But unless you're a rioter, then you can steal those suckers. You, yeah, you protest thing. It's legal, legal theft. <laughs> it's, it's nuts. The whole thing is nuts. By the way, who controls these people? is uh, uh, he has blinded the minds. And you could tell this to your standard Christian. They don't want to hear this, man. They don't want to hear it because everything is okay. Everybody's all right. Uh, he's blinded the minds of them that believe not. That's 2 Corinthians 4, 4. It's mental illness. You think, well, how do they think that way? Well, they're mentally ill because their mind is blinded. It's mental illness. It's been going on since Adam and Eve. It's always been 50-50. You wonder how, it, how can half be for it and half be against it? How can that be? What well, was that way right from Adam and Eve? A Adam wasn't the sinner. It was Eve. And the Bible's clear on it. If you bring that up to a Christian, they won't agree with you they, because they don't know their Bible. They don't know their Bible. They just don't know it. They don't know what it says. It's whatever, whatever the, uh, the devil is preaching from the pulpit. And they just nod their head in agreement. They just don't know what it says. 
And so, uh, and they just march in, in league with the rest of them, and the church is just filled with dirty birds, man. It's just filled with it. That's a sign of the end. The end. All right, so this league with the Gibeonites. Let's go to Joshua chapter 9. Joshua chapter 9, verses 1 through 21. It's re really verse 14. These are the ones that kind of faked fake news. They had their own fake news. They had uh, moldy bread. They made sure they had uh, clothes that were worn out, and they said they'd been traveling a long way. Where really they lived in Maple Heights, so they came over to Bedford, <laughs> you know. And then they, then they scammed them. They tricked, they tricked uh, Joshua into accepting them and making a league with them. And I don't feel led to read the uh, all uh, from ch verse one through verse twenty-one. There is a paragraph marking at verse twenty-two. And so uh, they had old, old wine, the bottles were kind of old and all. They, they just went to the junk, they went to the junkyard and, or to the dump and pulled all that stuff out. All right, and then they put it on and, and faked it. Uh, verse 14, and the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. They didn't seek the Lord for guidance to see which way, uh, uh, which way they should go. Uh, in, in, uh, it, it says, it does say pray uh, uh, in everything give thanks. I'm trying to think of pray, of pray about everything. Pray without ceasing. Well, there's pray without ceasing. No, I want one more, more uh, another. I can't think of one. In everything, yeah, in, with prayer and supplication, yeah, be careful for nothing. That is uh, uh, left page, right column, uh, Philippians? Oh, okay, page, it's, my page is 300. <laughs> uh, it, I have a world edition, you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that would be the verse to pray about everything. But you can find verses where you don't pray about it. Uh, God said to... Uh, with the sin of Achan, isn't it? Get up off thy face. Uh, he says that to Moses. Does he say that to Moses? He sa he's praying about it. And he says, oh, they lose the A. We had that last uh, I, A-I. And I think that's, that's where it was. He's praying, he says, Lord, what happened? And he says, get up off thy face. There's sin in the camp. So in other words, the, the answer is obvious. The answer is obvious. And when the answer is obvious, you don't have to go to the Lord. I mean, it's like, it hit, it's like meeting up with soupy sails. You get hit in the pie, uh, face with a pie, you ought to know you got hit in the face with a pie. And the younger people don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> they usually, he usually would seek the most stoic announcer and the most well-dressed to uh, attack. I think Soupy Sales was hit in the face with more pies than anybody in, in history. I forget how, because he would get Dale, because that was his trademark. He, he would, it started with him getting the pies, I think. And then he started uh, hitting other people with the pies. Anyway, um, they make this league and they don't seek the face of the Lord and ask not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And when it's obvious, obvious, when it's so so obvious, you should uh, you don't need to, you, you you don't need to pray about it. You, you just you need to act upon it. But when you're not sure and you are getting tricked, you need to pray about it. Pray about about the uh, uh, the deception. So they make this league with the Gibeonites that they can dwell among them. Uh, uh, why was it obvious that they shouldn't have made a league with the Gibeonites? What was Joshua commanded to do? What was, what was Moses commanded to do? Uh, even before, and he probably told Joshua, what were they commanded to do when they went over? Wipe them out. Wipe them out. Including what? 
everything. Women, the children, all the beasts, the cattle, they're to wipe them out. You say, well, why the cattle? Cattle were corrupted too. The cattle what? Were corrupted too. And what do they call that? It takes place in prisons. Strange flesh? No. It's what? Bestiality. I think you, are, you, you said it. Go ahead and say it. Bestiality. You say, well, come on. Who? Weird people do. They do that. They corrupt the whole thing, everything. It takes place in our country, generally on a farm, in a prison. It's a prison that also then, I don't know how many prisons still do that. There are some prisons that have some of the biggest farms out there. They were, uh, I saw a special, they had a movie on it. They were, uh, it, it's like modern day slavery, where they're planting and picking. And it, it's, it's not where there's plants, it's where there's farm animals. Why, by the way, why do they have a farm like that for prisoners? What, what's the motive? The social workers have motives here. <clears throat> to keep the, the food coming into the prison. Uh, help, help offset the cost, food. It keeps them busy. Purposeful, uh, did I pull that out from under, did I pull? It, it's purposeful activity. Other than making license plates. She sounds like a social worker, man. I, I sound like a social no, worker. Oh, you want to see perversion, man. <laughs> Just get involved with the county, man. You're going to see. And by, by the way, how do the judges rule? Thinking now, the judges have ruled that you could have these illegal ballots. And they went to a higher court. They went to, uh, oh, this is a week or, oh, this is months ago. And Burke is a, Burke, Burke, who's this guy in the Supreme Court? He said he wouldn't hear the case. Well, then the other, uh, Scalia or whatever, he says, stop the counting. Let, let's put a stop to this now until we decide on it. We, we were involved with the county. And we were involved with these judges making decisions. How do they rule? Do they rule according to the law, or do they rule according to the, how they feel? <laughs> they rule according to how they feel. Like it says, it depends on what court you're in. It's very important who the judge is. And, we, uh, and whenever, they, whenever there was a decision coming up, they want to get in certain courts, because some of these, some of these judges are just corrupt as can be. And they make the most bizarre judgments. In, in here, they didn't seek counsel of, of the Lord, and that's not counsel at the mouth of the Lord in, in this making league with the Gibeonites. I remember the one time, the last time they finally put the, they finally put the kibosh on the shared uh, living arrangements. The, the, the poor girl would live with us, and then on the weekends go home over there on the uh, what was it on the weekends there and with us during the week so they would be going to school with us and by the way our school system is called nordopia all right now none of the teachers are going to say that but that's what the joke is it's nordopia it's as uh, and there they have a no touch policy in that school no touching and the guy, uh, and he, these are white people. He's telling me all about, I think this was the vice principal. He's telling me we have a no-touch policy in here. We went, I went in there. I don't know what he was talking about. They're hanging all over each other. How do you play baseball? I were walking down the hallway. He's telling me there's a no-touch policy here. And they're hanging on each other. It, it just, it, it's just, it's because what's running, what's running the assignment. And they're, they're just as crazy as the rest of them. How do you play football? No, I, we're not talking football. We're talking the other stuff. And uh, you say, well, this beast, beastie business, uh, it's unheard of. It's, well, listen, they had a girl. Uh, there, there's a uh, 
livery near here. If you go down where you had that other rental, down Button, you know where Button is? Where, where's your rent? What's that street called over there? Where the A-frame, where the American uh, uh, Baptist, what, what is that called? Uh, American Baptist? First Baptist, but it's, uh, but what, what branch of Baptist is that? I think it's American Baptist. They preach works there, by the way. Just because it says Baptist doesn't mean it's, it's straight. Well, you go down there, it dead ends. You know where it dead ends? Have you ever gone all the way back in there? There's fields back in there, expansive fields back there. There was a barn back there, a livery, and horses, and all the yucky kids that were at Bedford would be going back there horseback riding because they're in, they're in with the in crowd. They do what the in crowd does. So they're all in with riding around there in the reservation on the horses. Well, there was a girl that showed the horse there and it was just, it's, that's what's going on, folks. And, and if you think that's what's not going on, you're, you're kidding yourself. Perverts, they are perverts and they are everywhere. Perverts. And, and, and their teachers, too, perverts. We had one that was a drunk. Another one was a, uh, uh, she wasn't a prostitute, but you could, you could use all the words for it. Uh, we had another one that took the kids to have perversion with them on a bus of the in crowd. It, it's just, it's perversion. It, it's evil. It's evil. And that's why we won't let our kids go to a public school. We do the, everything we do, can do to keep them out of there. In the last straw for my other daughter was at third grade. It, was, it, 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 hit, it hit Channel 3 or Channel 8 News. There was a third grader up there doing it with the kids. And they had that going on here at the grade school up here. I told, I told my daughter about it. I said, you, you need to get him out of there. And so they, uh, they, they got him out of there. And... Uh, it's just the way it is. It, it was there when I was in grade school. We, listen, there were girls who were pregnant when we were in grade school. You say that's impossible. There were girls in grade school when I was in first or second grade that were pregnant, that were in fifth or sixth grade, that went to school with my sister. You say that's it. Well, it's 12 years old. You, know. we, you, you need to open your eyes and see what's going on. These perverts, and that's what they were supposed to do, is go in there and kill everything. Kill it all. All right, so they make this league. And uh, uh, the one was, uh, I forget what the name of the... Uh, city was Olakan, oh, uh, L-A-C-H-A-N, or uh, they were a peace-loving, peaceable town. It was nice and peaceful there. And, and they went up, two tribes went up to clear them out. They're commanded, you kill everything breathing there. Everything breathing. You know the, the town I'm talking about? It begins with an L. Uh, uh, I can't think of it right now. There's, there's, huh? It starts with L. It's a city. And uh, they, had, they, they still had more land to conquer. It's probably near the end of Joshua. They, they said to go on up in there and take it. And they were a peace-loving people. In fact, there wasn't, they didn't even need a share. By the way, they elected... Somebody said it's in Ohio here. The first queer woman for a sheriff here in Ohio, someplace. That's how, that's how crazy this whole thing is. Just nuts. Don't ask me why you'd elect a woman as a sheriff. My goodness. Any woman. <laughs> anyway, you must learn to live with your mistakes. Second Samuel, turn there. So they make a, a league with these Gibeonites. Second Samuel 21, verses 1 through 3. Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, 
year after year. David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. So he went up there, he slew the Gibeonites, and they made a league, they had to learn to live with it, they didn't. Saul went to go slay the Gibeonites. There's verses about that. And the king called the Gibeonites, said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. Remember, they were supposed to go in there and kill the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Hittites. The... If you had a, a, a name, your, your tribe ended with I-T-E-S. You were, you were dead. You were dead. All right, and the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore, David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and wherewith shall I make the atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? So uh, it ends up where they want, they, they want the sons of Saul, and they're, they're going to kill them all. They're going to they're kill the, the remnant of Saul's house off. So the idea is uh, you have to learn to live with your mistakes. And people do, uh, throughout their lifetime, they, they do make mistakes. And in the end, you have to learn to, to live with it, learn with, with your mistakes. Uh, what are some mistakes? Usually it's not older people. You would like to think the older you get, you still make mistakes, but they're farther and few, fewer between. Name some mistakes. Anybody want to name a mistake? There was a kid, they told us to shop, I think this was in junior high, and the shop teacher said, um, this wasn't our class, he said, uh, he, 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 was, he, was, he was a real, uh, one of these hoodlums. There's a lot of hoodlums in the shop. He had taken two hammers, whether they were ball-peen hammers or claw hammers, and he's hitting them together. And he thought he was just as cute as he could be, slamming these hammers together. Anybody know how a hammer's made? It, yeah, what does it say on the hammer? It says on the hammer, not on the handle. Maybe they have it on the handle today. Years ago, on the hammer head, it says drop forged. All right, it is heat treated, drop forged. It, there's a certain temper to it. I mean, the hammer, I, I always tell the boys if they're hammering, they're going, I, I said, you give that nail a headache. Give the nail a headache. Slam it. I'm not real good with a hammer. I, I, that was a, this one right here, that was a hammer. And give the nail a, a headache. Well, they were hitting the, the kid is hitting the hammer head. I've given this illustration, and he's hitting it together. What happened? Chip broke off. A chip broke off. It'll shatter. You can heat treat steel, make it so hard when you're quenching it, it'll, it'll shatter. It can shatter if you don't know how to do it. So it, it broke off. Where did it go? Went into his eye, and I believe he became blind in that eye. You must live. Now, and when that happened, there, there's no backing up. You have to live with your mistakes. You live with your mistakes. Once in a while, a parent will forget they're loading in the car. They forgot, where did they put the baby? Uh, they put the baby on the roof of the car. They get in the car and they take off. You, I, you would hear about it once in a while on Paul Harvey. And the kid would be laying in the middle of the highway, and but safe. You know, it, 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 you know God spared it. You, you make mistakes like that, you, you're going to live with it. You, you may, and then for Job, though, though he was, uh, he was so careful, yet, yet trouble still came. Trouble still came, no matter how careful you are. Uh, other mistakes, health mistakes. Name a health mistake. Drinking. That's a health mistake. You end up ruining what? Your liver. Name another one. 
Oh, yeah, crack. Well, well something a little less uh, cigarettes. All right, how the ad, ad go? And they're always selling it with a cigarette lady, you know, who's dressed in short shorts. Cigars, cigarettes, zipperillos. Right. You, you don't even remember those ads. Those ads were our, our era. Cigars, cigarettes, zipper. Remember the dancing cigarette packs? What was it? Oh, yeah, Lucky's. Lucky's. Is that Lucky Strike? Lucky, Lucky Strike, Strike means fine to LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine to back. You can find them on YouTube. Yeah, you have to go to YouTube to see those ads. It's the dumbest ad. They're dancing, the dancing packs. And, uh, and then they end up, then they wonder why they have lung cancer. Now, you can get lung cancer without smoking. You can get that. Or, well, like Sonny said, crack. Who ends up taking care of the family? You're on crack. If it's not the grandparents. The state. If it's not the state. This before the state gets involved in the county. Pardon? Nope. The children. So the kids are old enough, they're seven and eight years old, they're old enough already, to make, they can make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and they know where the cereal is in the milk. They're already accustomed to running down to the corner store to buy a gallon of milk. And what happens is the mother and the father are so zoned, the children are now fending for themselves and feeding their own parents. They're feeding them their own parents. And that was the, the biggest reason I think kids went into custody 20 or 30 years ago was because of when crack or uh, what's the other one, heroin? I don't know. I don't know the difference. One of them, whatever hit the street, that more kids went into custody at that time than at any other time because the parents couldn't take care of the kids. The kids were taking care of the parents. And in the end, you, you end up uh, paying the price forever. What, and and now, now you're cured. You're off the crack. Jim would say this, what gets him back on crack? He said, just the smell of it. If you smell it, you can't resist it. And you have to have it. Just the odor of it. And so if you go in the inner city, we, we've done a lot of inner city work, maybe not near as much as some other churches, but we would go in there. They have, uh, what, what do you call those marks? Tracer marks? Tracks. Track, tra track, tracer tracks, or all up and down their arms, tattoos everywhere. They can smell the county services when they're coming down the street. I always say they can smell them coming is those people are mobile, they know how to hop from house to house, to stay, they stay one rental ahead of the county custody. They know how to avoid it. They're always on the move. And they have these tracks all over. And so what they do, the aunts on it, they get the nephew on it and the niece on it, and it's a whole house of this. It's just one big mess, one big mess. So they entertained it, and then Saul decided I, in his zeal he was going to go kill him. God said, no, you've already made a league with him, and now Saul's family is going to have to pay the price for it. You have to learn to live with your mistakes. Now, the illustration that I have written in my, my lesson in here is the Germans are still paying for the damage done in World War II. And I, 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 I don't know for that for a fact. I've only heard that. Does Germany pay some kind of a tax to Israel still today for all of that? You see, you and I as Americans, we don't, that's not in the forefront. We don't tend to see that. And if it is true, uh, Germany is still paying for all that they, all that, that they murdered, killed, and stole everything that they did. We're talking nation, but we're, and, and the other is, in this case, it's a tribe, and Saul and his family. I mean, and then, for, and then we discussed the mistakes that people make as an individual.
it's kind of it's kind of like a gun. What's on a gun to keep you from shooting yourself? There's the safety. It's when you're not safety conscious. You, I don't want the safety on. Oh, we we were witnessing to a guy over here. His his kids came once, I think. They lived at the red house here. They were tenants. And the owner of the house was the bar owner across the street, right here at the corner. I went and called on him, and uh, the mother wasn't there, just the father was there, and the kids were eating spaghetti. Were you with me, Mrs.? Somebody was with me. It could have been Jim. The kids, I, I, I'm not stretching this. There was spaghetti over their entire face like this, like a clown. And they had spaghetti sauce from the tip of their finger all the way up to their elbow, totally covered. The father at the table just, you know, A-okay. He had his hand, only had a couple stubs for fingers, and his hand was, uh, his fingers were gone. And I said, well, what happened? He said that the kid, he had the shotgun, and he had his hand over the shot, the end of the shotgun, and his kid discharged it, he blew his hand off. You pay for your mistakes, and you're going to have to li learn to live with them. And you might say, well, these are black people. Folks, these were white people. These are white people. Blew his hand off. Spaghetti everywhere. It, it was gross, but that's, that's how these kids and families live. They live like that. He, he who commits sin is a servant of sin. And you can't break this bondage unless you go to the God. You, you, only, one, only one that can break that, it, and, it, right. It don't and matter only with the power of God. It don't matter if it's drugs or sex or anything. Well, we weren't brought up like that, but those that are brought up like this, I mean, they are so steeped into this. It, it's, it's, it's just terrible. All right, uh, Joshua uh, uh, 19, verse 50. Now, you may say, well, I don't believe this or that. Man, just... Well, just go down, go, go downtown. You don't even have to go downtown. You go to some of these projects or apartment places that are near here. In Sagamore, uh, we had one, he was a military guy. He had married a, a girl. He had to marry her. And then we went and visited the family. We met the sister. She was a very young girl, and she was entrapped with older men. These are all whites. And then they were, uh, and then I met another girl entrapped in a, in, a, in a house down with other bus kids, and they were all black, white girl, uh, all blacks. And her address was down on Richmond on Shepherd Road. That's the address she used. I would assume it's her parents or her grandparents. It's the address she would use way out here, but she would live down in the Warner Road area. And uh, what, in, what entraps these girls? Pardon? I can't hear you. Drugs. They're so hooked on drugs, they need a fix so bad, they don't even have a dollar to, to buy the drugs. So they sell themselves to get the drugs. And they are just trapped in this, and they pay the price for it. And there's droves of it. Whole families of these people. The one, uh, the one girl, she would come here she married this black guy. They went fishing down here in the Cuyahoga. He jumped, this guy uh, jumped into the river. It was a hot day. He jumped in there to go swimming. How deep is the river, Ben? Yeah, how deep is the river? It came, when we fell in, it was up to about our waist. We, we, we went canoeing, we were fishing, and the, the boat was almost swamped before we even got started. And the, the first trouble we had, we said, well, let's stop here and we'll cast. So we grabbed a tree. The whole thing went under. Abe was with it. All the gear went in. 
Well, this kid jumped in someplace down here, further into town. He drowned. It was like eight, nine feet deep. He didn't know it. He, he couldn't swim and he drowned. Ouch. Ouch. You pay for your mistakes. You pay for that. Well, he must have been on something that took his judgment away. You're, you're saying he was high on something too? When you get higher, you, you lose your critical mind. Your, your oh, imagination. That, that, that's possible. He could have been. I know. I've been there. Uh, they think they're invincible. All kinds of things. I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. They, they, they think they're Peter Pan, you know. They take a flying leap. Takes your judgment away. Yep. 19 verse 20. No. Joshua 19... Verse oh, 50. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked, even Timnath Sarah in Mount Ephraim, and he built the city and dwelt therein. So the idea here is Joshua, uh, he got what was promised him at the last, and he was self sacrificing. So the idea here, Christian is well i would like i'd like my rewards i some people uh sin now and their sin follows them the other side some some are blessed here and the blessing follows them the other. i can't think of the verses right now if 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 you're really self-sacrificing and you're serving the lord and you say well man i never got mine you, you will you'll get it on the other side and so joshua got his on the other side in other words he got his at the last at the last. Joshua got his blessing that was promised him at the last. So uh, always rest assured that you, you will get what's coming to you. All right? Whether it be a mistake or for blessings, it will come. All right, the, uh, the long day, Joshua 10, go there. These are just some extra added things in here. Joshua 10, verses 12 through 14. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeah, and thou moon in the valley of Ahalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, till the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. It's not this written in the book of Jasher, which we don't have. So the sun stood still in the midst of the heaven, and, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man that the Lord fought for Israel. Why would he have the moon stand still too? What would be a good reason to have the moon stand still? The sun and the moon stood almost a whole day. Yeah, it would be so, we tell time that way. You tell time by the moon and the sun. The Jews by the moon Gentiles by the sun, and you tell time that way. And it says about a whole day. It wasn't. A, it wasn't. A, it wasn't 24 hours. It was about that, just to keep the time clock in order. Right? He, he, God made sure that the whole timetable would stay uh, stay correctly. I think He only asked for the sun to stand still, not the moon. God said, "Well, I got to keep the timetable. We we got to make sure the clock is." Make it work backwards too. Yeah, he, he makes it go, yes, and he can make it go backwards. How many degrees did he make it go backwards? Take a guess. I think it's 10 degrees. I think you're right. There, there's cultures all over the world that talk about the, the longest day now, the longest night. Uh, now, I didn't know that. Yes. And uh, we had somebody here that, uh, it was uh, Dr. Bao said that, he said, the Indians have a legend of the long night. That there's a legend here. I, obviously, you and I didn't learn that in school, at least public school. But the Indians, he said, the Indians have a legend about the long night here. That uh, there was a day when it last, night lasted the, you know, the whole, another, another long, another day which was another night, the legend of the long night. It's kind of like the flood. Every culture, from what I understand, has some kind of a flood story. So there's, a, you can say, well, there's a certain amount of truth. There's not a certain amount of truth. It's a fact. Noah's Ark did happen. 
and all cultures have that uh, story uh, in their culture. That's what I've heard. So the uh, long uh, legend of the long night is out there. In the, all right, uh, Caleb's Mountain, Joshua 14, uh, 6 through 15. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Japham, Neth, and the king. Kehazanezite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. And with, that means the, the, the twelve spies. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to a spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren went up with me, made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Listen, you've got, uh, uh, what, what do you call that in, in voting? It's called voter what? Uh, no, voter suppression. By making the hearts of the people melt. So then they say, why bother? It's, those tactics are nothing new. Nothing new. But Caleb is, is promised this mountain, he gets it. Without reading the rest of it, he gets, he gets, he picks his mountain and a Hebron and there is in verse 14 and that's where he dwells, he build, builds a city there. By the way, his daughter asks for something. Is it Caleb? I think his daughter asks for something. What did she ask for? She wanted a possession and it's only of uh, maybe two or three places this appears in the Bible. The Nether Springs and the Upper Springs. And she wants a possession. You gave me a possession in the Nether Springs. I want one in the Upper Springs. She makes that request and then she gets her request. What are the Nether, N-E-T-H-E-R, I believe that's how it's spelled. What are the Nether Springs and what are the Upper Springs? Springs. I'm pretty sure it's called the Upper Springs. Anybody know? Just without having that explained, it only appears two or three times, maybe four times. The Upper and the Nether. The Nether is down here, and the Upper is up there. She gets a blessing here and a blessing there. Folks, we as Christians get blessings here, and we get blessings there. A possession here and a possession there. You know, like the millennial rule here, and we're going to rule, rule and reign here, and we'll have possessions up there for eternity. All right, Caleb's Mountain and the memory verse. Joshua 24 will be done here with Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Verse 15. We, I think we all, all know the end of the verse. And it seemed evil unto you to serve. And if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. Uh, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now listen, there's there's a choice. He says either those gods or these gods. Which one are you going to serve? There's always a choice. And when there's a choice, what, what's the percentage then? Of the vote go? 50-50. Folks, you say, well, Adam was a sinner too. Uh, folks, it was 50-50 in the garden, man. It was, Eve was the bad, Eve was, Eve was the bad one. It was 50-50 then, it's always been 50-50. It's 50-50. It's always been that way. And he says there's a choice. It's either good or evil. Good or evil. If you choose the Democratic Party, you are, and they will deny this up and down, those that want to choose that. They are supporting what? Death. They're supporting what? Legalized death. A legalized death. They're supporting abortion. I, I don't know how you can... Other than having a twisted mind, they, these people need to work in a pressing factory. They have a twisted mind. Their minds have been blinded. Blind. I don't know how they can argue, try to argue way, their way out of that, but they do. 
Yeah, or they may say the baby's not a baby. Yeah. It, or, or they say it's not a baby. Okay. Well, they're they're believing a lie. They they uh, they make them, uh, and it's called when they deny the flood. They are willingly what? These people are willingly ignorant. They're dumb on purpose. They're dumb on purpose. And uh, Paul writes this: uh, If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. My pa my first Baptist pastor that I had, he, he interpreted it. You want to be stupid? Stay stupid. Right? Want to be stupid? Stay stupid. They're dumb on purpose. They're dumb on purpose. All right. Preaching in 15 minutes. Father, bless it now. In Christ's name, amen. That was quoting Kevin Copeland, Dr. Daniel. Oh, what did he say? They're dumb on, they're dumb on purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's in that flood. Yeah.